At the start of this year, I ran into an interesting problem. I had just started out as an indie developer, previously being a teacher for two years, and before that, working in various uh, indie startups, working in various games, doing contracts here and there, learning all about game development as well. The problem that I ran into was, what do I choose between Maya and Blender? Which one is the best for indie game development? Which one would be the most useful? And I believe this is a problem that a lot of people have run into. And if you're watching this video, you may have clicked the title because you have the same problem. There are two key things that I had to consider in order to come to a decision. Before I go into them, keep in mind, this is all from the perspective of being an independent game developer. If your goal is to work in, say, a AAA studio, Maya is still probably the industry standard and what you should be getting into. If your goal is to work in a AAA studio, you can get a student version. I believe there is a free student version that you can get and use, and you can use that to learn Maya to apply for a job one day after you build up a portfolio of work. For the rest of us indie game developers, let's look at the two reasons. The first reason is the cost of being an indie developer. When you're starting out, depending on your background, how much you've worked before, your family circumstances, your life circumstances, you may be starting with some form of financial income. You might be working part time. You may have no income, but you saved up a certain amount of money based off your job. You might have barely anything because you're just jumping into it without a financial buffer. You may be lucky enough to be able to uh, be a bit younger, maybe you're at home and you don't have to worry about rent and all that stuff. Regardless of your situation, keeping costs down is something very important for any type of business. And since our goal is to keep our costs at a low, we need to be careful with where we allocate resources. In this case, when I looked at Maya, I saw it as a software package that I loved using, I was very familiar with, I was quick with, but it, ne it wasn't necessarily the best choice in terms of putting my resources in there, especially with other software such as Blender. All my time teaching and developing, I had never really looked into Blender. I've heard students talk about it, I had seen other people use it, but I was very happy with Maya. I kind of knew a bit about Blender and I knew that it could do most things, but I wasn't sure of what it could do. But back to the cost of being an independent game developer, I decided that instead of purchasing Maya, my money would be better spent elsewhere. Maybe I could put it towards an Oculus Rift. Maybe I could put it towards a better graphics card, upgrading my machine so I can develop faster. Maybe getting a microphone for YouTube to share my progress. So the first question that you should, I believe you should ask yourself is, can this fit in your budget as an independent developer? Can you afford to allocate resources to Maya and to spend money on it? Is it going to serve you in the long run? Is it going to make you work better? Is it going to make the artists in your team more proficient? Or should you move into a free alternative like Blender? Only you and your team will be able to answer that. For me, it was easy to switch because I had time to learn. If you don't have time to learn, but you have the resources, then of course, stick to Maya. If you and your artists are familiar with it and you can get your game done quicker, then of course you're going to stick with Maya. But if you were in a similar position to me, Blender is a brilliant alternative. This goes into the second question, and this is why Blender is a great alternative. Can Blender do everything required for an indie game that I may want to develop? When I was starting out, the platforms that I was looking at were mobile, desktop, and VR. Blender has four key things that are required in any modeling package if you want to be able to do everything. Modeling, unwrapping, rigging, and animation. These are the four key components. Luckily, Blender has all of these. It can model, you can unwrap, you can rig, you can animate, you can add IKs, a control rig. It's really nice. It can do the four key things. This allows me to make a game on mobile, desktop, or in VR. It has a few extra features, and this leads into me thinking that Blender is an all-in-one package. So let's go over what I believe an all-in-one package is and the features of Blender. Blender has modeling, unwrapping, painting. You can paint models in Blender. You can sculpt, you can rig, you can animate, and you can bake normal maps. To me, this is an all-in-one package because you can do everything you could, I could ever want for any of my games in Blender directly. I don't need to purchase another piece of software. 
I don't need to worry about anything else. I can use Blender alone, and that is why I believe it is an all-in-one package. And for me, this answers that second question of, can Blender do what I need it to do, just like Maya? Can it produce the models for my games? And that is the question you should ask yourself. For question one, if the cost of Maya, you'd prefer to allocate that somewhere else, then that's a tick box for Blender. If for the second question, Blender can do everything that you require for the games you want to make, then that is another tick box. It is most likely that you want to switch to Blender. For me, it ticked both of these boxes, and that is the reason why I switched from Maya to Blender. I hope this video was of use to you. If you're in a similar situation, I hope you can figure it out. Remember, go with what feels right, go with your instinct. You'll be most happiest not listening to some random person on the internet like myself, but going with what you believe is the right choice. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.